Hello everyone, this is Carly from Creatively Graphics, and today I wanted to show you guys how to import your STL file that you got from Fusion 360 or whatever design software you used for your cosplay armor, and how to import it into the slicing software. So the slicing software I'm using is called Flashprint. This is one that goes with the Flashforge printer that I have. So you just go up to File, And I'm just going to go up to load file. And then you find whichever one you, whichever file you wanted to put on here. So I'm going to do this side plate for an example. Then you click open. And then you can just rotate it. However, you need to rotate it in order to make it fit. And then this is where you can scale it. And if you want it to be in inches, you can click here for inches. And I'm going to make mine up to 120%, since this is going to be a larger piece. Make sure it's center and on the platform. So this is, just to go over some of the settings here, this is where you can set your view. This is move, so wherever you want to move your print. Then rotate scale. This is going to help you cut things. Like if you want to split a piece in half or you need to split a piece in half in order to make it fit on the print, I mean on the print bed, then this is how you would do it. Then duplicate, auto layout, which I don't often use, and then supports. So I generally, I like tree form just because it takes up um, it often takes up less filament and it's just easier to break away from the print. The overhang threshold is automatically sent to 45 degrees. I often keep it like that unless I um, am doing a more upright print. And then post diameter, base diameter, and base height. Those can all be changed depending on what you like. These settings are ones that I've worked with before and they've worked well for me. So you can just click auto supports and the software will find the areas that are above the 45 degree angle and it will automatically put in supports for you. And if there's areas where you want there to be supports but it's not automatically doing one, then you can go on to manual and click add and it's not going to really let me do it here because there's really not many places that supports need to be added. But if it's green, like it is right now, then it can be added. If it's red, that means it's not going to accept it. And then if you don't like where a support is, you can just click remove and it will remove the support. And then for my slicing software, I just go into start slicing. And these are... These settings will all depend on what printer you have, what filament you use, and just personal preference. So I have to switch mine to FlashForge PTG, which is the filament I'm using. And I print at an extruder temperature of 235 and a platform temperature of 60 degrees Celsius. And then I don't generally work with any of these. I do sometimes work with the infill and I might change it to have there be more top solid layers and more bottom solid layers just to give it a stronger shell per se. And then this is where you can change the fill pattern. I just generally leave it to hexagon. And then you click slice and the software will do its thing. Sometimes it can take a few minutes, depending on the print. And 
and then I often want to see how I think everything's going to go and see if I like it. So this is just going to show you everything from the infill to the solid structure, bridges, so on and so forth. And then up here it's going to show you about how long it's going to take and about how much material it's going to take. And then once I do that, I go up to local save. And from here you can send it directly to your printer if you have um, a cable going to your printer. Or you can do what I usually do, which is I just save it locally to my desktop and then I use a flash drive and I can just put my flash drive directly into my printer so I can continue using my laptop whenever I need it while the printer is printed. So that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you have a wonderful day.